I'm Dedda, the co-founder of City Ponics, and I'm really happy to be here today. Let me start by asking you to take a second to imagine a farmer. What kind of picture do you have in your mind? Did it look a little bit like this? Like this? Or even like this? Whenever I ask people I just met for the first time what they thought a farmer looks like, the answer has never changed. It's usually an elder, someone in a straw hat, someone who's not that young, and someone who just doesn't look like me. If I were to give myself labels, I'm a professional procrastinator, a user experience designer, a fashion lover, and a business builder. But out of all of these labels that I have, the one that shocks people the most is that I'm a farmer. Specifically, a farmer running an urban vertical farm on top of a car park rooftop. When I started hosting visitors at a farm, and even for today's talk, I wondered whether I should be wearing a straw hat, just so I could look more like one. Even though this image of a farmer is no longer the only reality today. This leads me to my next question. Take a second to imagine a farm. What kind of picture do you have in your mind? Did it look a little bit like this? Like this? Or even like this drawing here? I actually asked a seven years old named Ancient for help to draw out what she had in mind when she thought of a traditional farm. And this was what she shared with me. You see, this picture of a traditional farm is actually pretty common. It's usually one that's rural, one that is muddy, slightly dirty, and one that requires strenuous work under the hot sun. But what if I told you this is just one of the many ways of farming? That there is a more sustainable way that does not contribute to land or water pollution. And that is a faster way to get your food from the farm to your table without incurring that much carbon footprint or food wastages. And what if I told you that the answer to these food issues is just outside your window? So for today's talk, I'm not going to be sharing a guide on the 12 steps to growing the healthy plants. And neither will I be answering questions like, Hey Danelle, my plants are turning yellow. Am I watering too much? But instead, I'll be sharing my observations from running an urban vertical farm on top of a car park rooftop and why I believe our future farms will be in our backyards just a stone's throw away from where we live. During the Japanese occupation in the 40s, food was scarce and many people turned to growing their own crops such as tapioca and vegetables. Every spare bit of land was turned into some sort of vegetable plots. So you can see the photo on the right here, the students from St. Joseph Institution tending to their farm in their school. After the war, extensive efforts were made to enhance Singapore's food production. Between 1940 to 1947, there was actually a threefold increase in the total amount of agricultural land, from an estimation of 5,000 acres in 1940 to 15,000 acres in 1947. In the 60s, we even had a farm school in Sembawang built specifically to boost Singapore's agricultural output. And in the 70s, we had 170,000 people involved in the agricultural industry, making up about 9% of our population then. Many people understood the hard work of farming, and they understood the virtue of not wasting food. There is this Chinese saying that goes, which roughly translates to the understanding that every grain on our plate is a result of hard labor. Many people were growing their own food in their backyards, and they ate family farm produce. Farms were easily accessible, and they had direct exposure to farming. Over time, with the increasing urbanization and decreasing amount of land set aside for farming, the total amount of agricultural land space we have actually decreased from an estimation of 30,000 acres in the 60s to an estimation of 3,000 acres today. 
So this is just about 1% of our total land space in Singapore. You can see a trajectory of our total agricultural land space between 1961 to 2018 in the, in the graph here. As such, Singapore turned to import diversification, importing almost 90% of our food from about 170 countries. We are no longer as connected to our food source as we used to be. And we started to get all of our produce from the supermarket and we lost the opportunities to learn uh, the vocabulary around our food source, as well as to learn the question where our food is coming from. We are simply no longer as connected to our food source. This is one of the re many reasons why City Ponics started exploring how we can bring urban farms to the communities to redefine our relationship with food from one that is disconnected to one with understanding and respect. I would say it is pretty similar to the human connection. We can only learn to respect one another when we understand their background, their history, and most importantly, their roots. So by this time, we started exploring and looking around, and we started seeing that there were so many multi-story car park rooftops that were underutilized. These multi-story car park rooftops are, are underutilized and residents do not usually park there due to the afternoon sun that heats up their cars. We thought, wouldn't this direct sunlight be great for plant growth? These multi-story car parks are also available island-wide, usually right by the HDP blocks. And we thought, wouldn't this close proximity be great to connect residents to their food source? What was once seen as a space for cars, a space that is usually empty, we saw it as an opportunity to turn it into a place for sustainable food production. And this kick-started our journey of setting up Singapore's pioneer commercial car park rooftop farm. Through this process, we learned that solutions may not necessarily require us to start from scratch, but rather we can take a look at the existing infrastructure, the underutilized resources, and rethink how we could turn them into valuable ideas. Having been running City Ponics Car Park Rooftop Farm for more than three years now, it is really gratifying to be able to see the impact of bringing urban farms to people. Out of all of the impacts that I've seen, I've personally witnessed the effects it has on food safety, food security, food sustainability, and most importantly, to our communities, particularly the young ones. By setting up an urban farm within the community, connecting residents to their food source, residents now are able to get their produce directly from our farm, allowing them to actually enjoy freshly harvested vegetables on a daily basis. Some of them even shared that they know when to drop by our farm because they could see us harvesting from their windows. If you stay nearby enough, it literally only takes you five minutes to get your vegetables from our farm to your table, significantly reducing the total amount of carbon footprint generated from food mounts. Nothing is truly safer than knowing where and how your produce is grown. Residents who drop by, they, they get to see that their vegetables is grown in a clean and pesticide-free environment, alleviating any forms of food safety concerns. There is a running joke to say that it is impossible for us to use any forms of pesticides because we have all these eyes and CCTVs around us due to our close proximity to the residents. Nothing is truly safer than knowing where your food is grown. And by focusing on clean farming practices, allowing our plants to grow naturally and thrive in their environment, we started seeing bees and butterflies at our urban farm. These beautiful and hardworking creatures drop by on a daily basis to help us pollinate our plants. By turning a space meant for cars into a place meant for food production, we started to see that it introduced a new farm ecosystem 
and nature into the neighborhood. By allowing visitors to easily experience urban farming with our proprietary farming technology, the Aqua Organic System, we were able to raise awareness about sustainable farming, as well as the importance of growing more with less. We started hosting school tours and community markets to provide education on sustainable farming, as well as the importance of a farming methodology that is mindful of zero wastage, productivity, low water and energy consumption. By integrating our farm into the community, we were able to hire senior citizens from nearby community homes to help us with farm maintenance. I still remember one of the uncles sharing he used to actually grow his own food when he was younger and to be able to experience farming again in present times reminded him of what it was like in the past. Just that now, he no longer needs to work for long hours under the hot sun and the farming process is simpler now. It is really meaningful to be able to hear this from someone who got to experience farming from different eras. I would say having hosted more than 300 farm tours, one of my favorite moments truly comes from seeing children having fun while harvesting their own vegetables. By allowing them to interact with their food source at a young age, we saw how it created a sense of wonder and play for them to get curious about the food that they are eating. In the photo here, you can actually see two girls, Ying Xuan and Ying Xing, seven years old and nine years old respectively. They visited our urban farm in year 2020. And I still remember Ying Xing, a non-vegetable lover, harvesting her second servings of vegetables after trying our farm produce for the first time. Her mom told me that it was her first time seeing her elder daughter harvesting and initiating to eat vegetables on her own. If you recall the drawing of the traditional farm earlier, it was actually done by Ying Xuan here. And recently, I asked for their help to draw what they had in mind when they thought of an urban farm. And this was what Ying Xing shared. You see, what was important to me is that it only took them one visit to shift the way they view farming. That farming could be clean, simple, and fun. And that vegetables, when freshly harvested, could be sweet and crunchy. Seeing the effects such farming exposure had in shaping the young minds, we started working with educational institutions from primary schools to pre-university levels to bring our urban farming technology into their environment. We believe it is important for the younger generation to gain early exposure to alternative farming methods, and hopefully this can kickstart their interest in contributing to the future of agriculture innovation. Every seed we plant our urban farm truly starts with an intention, an intention to do better for our environment, our community, and our planet. Running a rooftop farm helped me learn that food is truly a universal language that is able to bond people from different cultures, different age groups, different religion, races, and background. I hope today's talk inspired you to rethink the future of farming and perhaps shift your view in the possibilities of farming and the way we consume our food. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could wake up to a sea of green and be able to enjoy freshly harvested or even self-harvested vegetables every day? Thank you, and I look forward to meeting you in your backyards in the future.